Hi everyone. Um, in case we haven't met yet, my name is Lulu Locks and I am the founder of Sweet Tart and Providence Pinup in Providence, Rhode Island. And I want to welcome you to my Wednesday evening wonderful Facebook Live moment. Um, much like everybody else in the world, sometimes being live is a little nerve-wracking, right? So you're afraid of mistakes, you're afraid of looking a little too chintastic or being awkward, but what I've really come to realize is that people are super happy to see your face when you're being authentic as well as when you are being retouched and overproduced and overposed and those are all great curated moments, but sometimes we just need a little live question and answer section. Um, hi Dawn, welcome. So I'm hoping to chat with you on Wednesdays for about 10 minutes for the next year. And then this way, when we add them all together, you'll have a better view of what Sweet Tart does. I have such amazing artists here that do all different types of work. Um, they're all incredible aesthetic entrepreneurs. They're folks that do avant-garde haircuts or classics or beautiful highlights or balayage or wig work or drag or, you know, just regular barbering. We do so many different things and I feel that Facebook Live might give us a really great opportunity to showcase a lot of the diversity that we represent here on Broadway, again, in Providence, Rhode Island. So... Please shout out if there's anything that you would like for me to answer. I will do my very best to get to any questions. Um, and I'll be happy to reply to any comments if you're watching this when I'm no longer live. But today I've decided that I'm going to touch on something that I feel is a little bit um, underrepresented in the hair education world and that is brush knowledge. I'm a huge fan of owning a lot of different types of brushes. Um, they all have a very different purpose. And I like to compare them to um, kitchen tools. You're not gonna use the same kind of spatula for a cookie as you would to pull a roast out of a drip pan. You're not gonna use the same kind of knife for a tomato as you would an apple you know there there's a different texture involved you're working with a different material and sometimes having the choice of the right working tool is going to give you a more favorable result so one of the ways that i sometimes watch my clients walk what yes live <laughs> um Dawn, you may be using the wrong brush, but with your beautiful curls, you're not going to need a lot of brushing, and I'm going to save the one that you really need for last, because it's the brush that I think every single human being should own. And it's super overlooked for a lot of reasons, and I'll tell you why in a little bit. But first, I'm going to start with this one. Da -da -da -da. Look at this fabulous brush. So this, or one of its relatives, is something that I think most people that are blow drying should own. If you have wet hair and you want to get it dry quickly, or if your intention is to use a curling iron or a flat iron, you want to get your hair dry as fast as possible. And I often make an analogy that you're not going to take a wet shirt out of the washer and throw it right on the ironing board, right? You're going to get it dry first before before you use the iron on it. So think of this as your fast forward on the dryer. The air vent through it is gonna give you the better ability to get water out of your hair. It's gonna add air into the strands. See how you can see the light right through my hair? It's gonna detangle your hair. And because the brush itself is vented, the hot air is gonna flow straight through and it's gonna evaporate moisture off a lot more quickly. When we're using a brush that's flat here and completely blocked, it can slow the process down a little bit. So this is a really nice cheat. And this particular brush has a really smart shape where because it's head shaped, it's very comfortable on the scalp and people find it to be very soothing. The bristles move a little bit so it's detangling. This brush is really fantastic in the shower. Um, but again, because of its shape, 
you can also use it for styling and get a nice little bend to your hair. So it can be used in a lot of different ways. Um, if ever you need to ask more questions about hairbrushes, please come on in and we're happy to work with you and answer questions. So this is a really great brush. Another one that I really love is this guy here. It's called the Wet Brush Pro. These are really inexpensive brushes, guys. None of the items that I'm gonna feature right now are over $30. I wanna say that each of these run anywhere between $12 and $25, depending on the size. This is called a wet brush. And one of the things I love about this, and perhaps you've seen cushion brushes before, these, again, very comfortable on the scalp. This black part is squishy. It feels really, really nice. But these bristles in particular are incredibly flexible. So if this brush encounters a knot in your hair, the bristle is gonna kinda bend out of the way rather than snapping your hair. So when we're thinking about detangling our hair, we wanna choose something to detangle that is less strong than our hair. If you have thick, tough hair that can take anything, you can use a tougher brush. But me personally, I've got that like super fine, breaks really easy kind of hair. So when I'm detangling, I softer is better. This brush is great for blow drying with, but I would suggest that if your hair is incredibly thick, this might not be the one for you because these bristles can um, malform a little bit when they're heat treated. But super brush, really inexpensive. I wanna say it's about 15 bucks. Um, and a really great staple in every hairdresser's cabinet that I know. We've all used a round brush, right? So favorite brush for styling, they're really, really great. Um, I walked away from my hairbrush display, but I am gonna say this out loud, is I really feel strongly that a ceramic brush is important. And the reason that is, is that if we're working with a hair dryer, we can get a hot spot in the center of the brush and that br spot can singe your hair. But if you're working with a ceramic brush, what it's gonna do is it's really gonna distribute the heat all the way around and you'll find that the heating is more even and you'll have less overall damage to your hair. An additional benefit is that Damaged hair is missing a few ions, and ceramic is a material that can give off ions. So on a really, really microscopic level, there is some truth to a ceramic tourmaline brush or hair dryer repairing some of the damage in your hair. You may also find that it will get you dry more quickly because those ions are gonna fill in little potholes in your hair that are hanging onto the water. So if your hair is healthier and has less potholes, it dries a lot faster. Little Rhode Island analogy, if you live here, you know we live with it. So I've got a couple more brushes left I'm gonna show you that maybe you haven't seen before. Dun, 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 dun. These three. One, two, three. Ba -da. This one is a really cool guy. It's a nice mix of synthetic as well, and that's what these tall blue guys are, and natural bristle. Um, and one of the reasons I really love this brush is, again, detangling with this one is really great because the synthetic bristles, if you hit a big knot, will get a little bit deeper within your hair. But this particular brush is really designed for backcombing or teasing. I don't always love the word teasing because nobody likes to be teased. Gosh. So I have a nice little rectangular section here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the brush in just a couple inches away from my scalp and then I'm gonna move until it stops. I'm gonna do that again, ready? Brush in, just till I hit that cushion, like I can almost feel it. And it gives me this funky looking little section here. See how the light doesn't pass through it quite as much anymore? But what I love about this method is that if I do three little sections of this right at the crown of my head, it's gonna give me some great crown volume. One, two, hi Jason and Barbara. Thank you for joining me. We're doing a little discussion on hairbrush choices today. Hey TJ. Ta-da, okay. So gentlemen, this might not be the right brush for you, 
But this little trick could impress someone that's having a bad hair day. So see how I'm a little big and a little poofy here now? So I'm just gonna spread these out a little bit. And then I'm gonna flip my natural hair over. Ta-da! See how I've got a little more oomph? Gives me this nice little lift. I was feeling a little flat before. How quick was that, right? So the nice thing about this type of brush is if you have super silky fine hair like I do, and teasing doesn't like to stay, this is gonna last a little bit longer and it's gonna make it a little bit easier to stick in your hair. This brush I wanna say is about $10. We have it here at Sweet Tart. Everyone here is happy to explain things for you. Now, let's say your hair is even a little bit more fragile or you're looking for something that does a little bit more detail work. I love this guy. Ah, oh, Jason, you're so sweet. Thank you. You always look amazing as well. This is a rat tail brush. What I love about this is that it helps me section quickly. I can get right in there, do a little back combing, and I can smooth it out. Now, you'll notice that I didn't smooth over my back combing section with the other one. Bing, ba -ding. Because these little teeth will get all the way in and take all my work out. So see how I've got a little bit of oomph? These teeth will touch my scalp and pull that back combing out directly. And then my oomph is gone because I set it to be gone. But with this guy, because the bristles are closer together and I've put this nice back combing in, I can get in here and just lightly smooth the surface. So this is how someone, if I chose to back comb my entire head and then just use this brush lightly on the surface, that's how you get this really great glossy top to an otherwise hugely back combed hair. And maybe on another day I'll do a comb out on someone where I really um, make some big hair and give it a great shiny finish without knocking all my work apart. Um, Dawn, I, I'm not sure if you're still here. I think, is there a way I can find out? Well, I'll play with it later. Um, this is one brush that I think everyone should own, ladies and gentlemen. And it is a 100% natural boar bristle brush. And the reason I feel so importantly about this is we spend billions of dollars, billions with a B, replacing our natural scalp oils. Our bodies have a fantastic hair conditioner built in, right from our scalp. And the cosmetic industry, with love, and I know I'm a member of it, convinces us that we need to wash it all out and replace it with something from a bottle. Yes, it's a great thing to do, to use great shampoo and great conditioner. But let's also acknowledge that on that day where maybe you've skipped a day, you've gone a little too long, our scalp is rich with a really wonderful conditioner, and in particular, if you have curly hair, right? And Dawn, this one's for you. You really have to put some effort into getting that natural conditioner from your scalp all the way to your ends. If you have curly hair, your scalp oil has to take this really circuitous route to get all the way to the end. So just like that old fashioned, like 100 strokes a day makes your hair healthy, there's truth to that. When women were not brushing their hair or washing their hair daily, brushing was your primary cleansing because what would happen is you'd go section by section and the brush itself would exfoliate your scalp. So you're gonna have less flaky scalp if you use a bristle brush on a regular basis. It would spread the oil from your root down to your ends so your hair looks a lot cleaner because your scalp oils are not just concentrated right on the part, they're all over. I mean, think about a shine serum. It's this glossy, oily stuff that you put a couple drops in your palms and then you're pressing it only onto the ends because you don't need it here. Well, what happens if we just use our own scalp oils? You're gonna have a lot healthier hair. So it's gonna close the cuticle of your hair it's gonna make it a lot shinier. It's gonna increase the circulation in your scalp. So if you're experiencing dry scalp problems or itchy scalp problems, or if you feel like you're a little bit flaky, um, daily brushing 
or at least if you're a curly girl, brushing right before you shampoo is gonna give you better overall health. Think of it as like a great dusting before you vacuum. You know, sometimes you wanna really get in there and clean it. So brushing is not only great for your hair, but it's great for your scalp. It's, it's gonna energize it, it's gonna condition your hair, it's gonna make it glossier, it's gonna make it more lovely. The only thing I do recommend for um, maintaining a more bristle brush is that you wash it with your favorite shampoo and then you make sure to let it dry bristles down um, because as it dries, you'd rather have that water leave rather than pooling and damaging the base of the bristles. Um, so again, this is not a very expensive brush. It's definitely under $20. We do have it here at Sweet Tart on Broadway in Providence. Um, and that's about it for today. I don't want these Facebook Live sessions to be terribly long and I'm hoping that if I do them on a regular basis, maybe I'll get a few suggestions or questions from you guys, but new year, new challenges, new goals. And for me, um, one of those goals is to be a little bit more accessible to all of our customers here at Sweet Tart because um, by being a voice for my whole team, you get to learn a lot more about everyone here. So I hope that maybe you learned one or two things and I look forward to your questions in the comments and I will see you next Wednesday, probably around 5.30 or so again for 10 minutes with Sweet Tart in Providence. Thanks y'all, bye.